Hey guys, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. And the name is Emmanuel as usual. And today, sorry for the so many conjunctions, but today we're going to be talking about a very, very important aspect of our businesses and of our existence, which is policies, regulations, how the governments could make or break your business with one simple regulations or one simple policy that comes out of nowhere. And if you've run a small business and you are trying and you think you want to try and acquire customers online by doing adverts and doing anything on social media. I think you should watch the end of this podcast to really, really get a grasp of what is going on in Nigeria's technology space. And it is not really, it's not, it's not welcome. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for the unconventional uh, intro, but it's not really much of say something happening inside the technology space. Yeah. It's in the fringes of technology. That's now affecting. Uh, well, I mean the CBN, whatever they do, mm. it's 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 mainly finance, but it almost always has ripple effects. Okay, across every part of the economy. So the CBN has debited fifteen commercial banks. So should we be scared or should we be worried about that? Mm. Neither. Neither. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Why? the CBN is saying that this is a. This is a move to mop up liquidity. So they've debited about 838 billion naira from all of these banks. And um, it's not like they are penalizing them, but this is part of, um, this is their cost, um, cash reserve ratio, CRL. So it's like what the percentage of the customer's deposits mm-hmm. that you keep it in CBN. So right now it's 32.5%. But earlier this year, after at the last monetary policy meeting in September, the CBN revealed that they were going to increase it from 27%, um, 27.5% to 32.5%. So let me get this straight. 32% of my deposit yeah, is, the with the CBN. is with the CBN. Yes. Okay, not my my deposit per se, but everybody's deposit in my yeah. bank now. They gathered everything together mm-hmm. and gave 32% to CBN. For yes. them to do what? So the CBN usually, the, is, it, this is something they've always been doing. So um, one reason is um, they they keep it as a hedge. So this rarely ever happens. Okay. But there's there is this uh, let's say hypothetical scenario where customers wake up one morning and either something has happened and everybody panics and then they decide to withdraw all of their cash. Okay. And if you know how banks work, they don't exactly have money. It's actually customer deposits. So yes, they have money that they make from the transactions you conduct or these other services they offer, but they don't exactly have money. The deposits that you and I make is what gives them the money. So there's always a scenario that there's always a possibility as slim as it can be that something happens. You know, um, I think it was last month where people, I mean, piggy bank was, uh, piggy vest was trending for some reason and some people withdrew their um, savings I imagine that happens to you, First Bank, for example, and let's say a quarter of his customers want to withdraw their deposits. There are people that will not, but there are always people that will panic and do all of that. So if that happens, the First Bank needs to have like somewhere they can go and take out money to pay these customers. Because if they don't, it could cripple their business. So the CBN has always asked banks to keep a percentage of deposits um, and they just keep it there. They don't invest it. They don't do anything. It just stays just, there. Just hedging for yeah. any eventuality. So are they anticipating anything that will make customers or Nigerians panic? In the Not really. So and that, and that thing is, um, CRL is, way, is a way that um, some central banks use to hedge uh, to like control inflation. So you know that Nigeria's inflation rate has been going up. And um, the one, one thing that causes inflation is too much liquidity in the economy and the CBN governor claims that there's a lot that one of the reasons for Nigeria's current inflation is a lot of liquidity. So by taking out money from the banks, they reduce liquidity in the, in the economy, which ideally should stem the rise of inflation. But now do we really have a lot of liquidity? Yeah, people economy. don't have money. So, so what do they mean by there's a lot of liquidity? Do people have money. That's the issue. I mean, if this was in the US, um, people are, some people have said that um, the 
the pumping of stimulus funds into the U.S. economy during COVID yes, in is US responsible. It's, it's understandable, right? Yeah. But well, I mean, Nigeria, in Nigeria, we are holding Indomie. So what liquidity <laughs> was... Okay, so is it the loans they gave or what? I, I, I mean... I, I, so I, I still can't understand that the reasoning I mean because salaries are increasing with the inflation. Mm, so what uh, what liquidity are they referring to? But another thing is taking um, increasing the CRR rates of banks also means they have less funds that they can lend. Hmm. So you are most likely not going to get a loan easily from the banks. from the banks, but. In the situation where you get it, they could also increase their interest rate, which um, the CBN the CBN has actually raised the benchmark interest rate recently to about fifteen percent. So okay. banks could actually decide to raise interest rates for their loans. So um, this is like it's like a let's say popular move for central banks across the world. Just um, reduce the amount of money banks have. And then use it to stem inflation for a so, bit. So, for me, it just feels like Nigeria is just trying to copy what other countries are doing because other countries are doing it mm. um, long before. So, of course, it's no news that there's a global economic uh, crisis. Yeah. Right? Uh, inflation is shooting up, not just in the US, but in Europe and other countries. For the first time, the US is gaining strength against the Euros. Mm-hmm. For the first time in a long time, actually. So, but Nigeria's inflation since I mean we've been we've been having an inflation. Yes, the CBN and um, Bureau of Statistics they may differ on how it has been. But we've been having like we've been living through an inflation for a very long time now. It's almost like it's like this a quarter. constant. Yeah, they tell you this quarter inflation has gone down. Next quarter it goes up and all of that. So it's interesting that this is the. Um, strategy that the CBN is taking, but then it's not like they've ever been popular for choosing the best strategies that they could use. Oh boy, this this is this is quite is it, it's it's pain in my head. I'm, I won't lie, but let's just keep a pin on this right now and bring you to the fintech summit that we're hosting in November 26 at Four Points by Sheraton. So we'll be having conversations like this across different breakout sessions and of course we're going to be looking at the true impact of fintech in nigeria's economy so when the cbn is coming up with policies like this how do financial technology companies react how do, what 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 do they do right then there are initiatives like the startup bill that are supposed to create an enabling environment for startups how does this how does it time with all these other bells and whistles that we're going to be looking at so so many, many things to be looking at. And uh, I think you should head to fintech.techpoint.africa and grab your ticket ASAP. And there's a side attraction, right? Yes, there's a... Not um, a side attraction, with <laughs> major attraction, yes. Yeah, there's a fintech hack- um, hackathon. And you... So basically, you need to build a solution for financial services. A very innovative solution at that, not just um, a copy and paste model. Yeah, you build a solution for financial services in Nigeria, and then you stand a chance of winning five thousand dollars. So um, you can also go to the website and sign up to um, submit your your or to indicate your interest. And um, ideally, you should be in a team, but individuals can also sign up. But yeah, um, to be so the earlier you need, the better because registration closes tomorrow. That's Friday. And if you don't register before then, well, um, that, that that means you lose the opportunity to win $5,000. But not just win $5,000, this is also an opportunity for you to test yourself, one. Um, we are going to be having some really experienced investors. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, think about the upsides of having really experienced investors with huge networks listening to your idea. You could be the next flutter wave. Don't take my word for it. Register for the hackathon and then take our word for there. it. <laughs> and when you blow, don't forget your boys on the Tech Point Africa podcast. Okay, yes. so yes, that's so. Moving on from that, right? We have a lot of bad news for you today, right? <laughs> but let's move to the not so bad news before we move to the main secretary. Bad news is newsies. <laughs> so okay, so number one, 
Google is launching its cloud region in Africa, its first cloud region in Africa with the launch of a data center in South Africa. So I, I saw that story and everything just clicked. Why? If you've been, sorry. If you've been following Google's activities for the past few years, everything kicked into high gear in 2016. And think about it very, 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 and look at it closely. Google has been jumping from one initiative to the other. So we could be talking about the activities of big tech, but no big tech company has had a very, very significant presence in Africa. For me, no, not even just for me. You, it's a very, very observable. There's the Google Digital Skills Training. There's Google Journalism Fund. There's Google Free Wi-Fi Station. There's uh, Google Project Loon. There's Google Project Tara. So Project Loon, they wanted to use air balloons to be beaming internet signals in Kenya. Project Tara, now they want to be using beams of light to beam internet signals. So think Starlink using radio waves to send internet signals from space down to Earth. Google is using Project Tara beams of light to send signals, internet signals to remote communities. So, so many, many projects. And if you really, really look at all these projects and follow all the, th- the stories we've been publishing at Tech Point, you see that no matter who you are, whether you're a business owner, whether you're an executive, whether you're a job seeker, or you're just a random person that doesn't care about any of this, Google has one thing for you. Like, I mean, that is focused on Africa, not just the... Everything, Google, everything yeah. Google does, right? But they have a skills training, so you want to learn digital skills. There's a Google Career Certificate, so you want to learn cloud computing, you want to learn data analytics, so many, many things. And they've all positioned this like, oh, they're doing this to support Africa. <laughs> that is where my head has been ringing for the past two years since I started covering uh, Google's activities, right? What's in it for Google? a business company and they're an ad revenue company their main source of revenue is from their ad business the advertising so why are they interested in for instance landing a data center so for the uninitiated the data center is most likely so if you think of the internet as a human body right the vein are those submarine cables okay under the ocean connecting all the continents together. So it's the vein that is carrying the signals. But these data centers, they're the heart. They're the ones that are not pumping no, it's to every, other part. every other part. So the cables are carrying the internet signals from wherever they are. Then it goes to the heart. Then the heart distributes it to the organs that need it. Or, yeah. And that heart also distributes it through the veins and the arteries. Right, so that does think of data centers as the heart of the internet, right? So, for a data center to be launched in Lagos, it means you're going to be having faster internet. So, instead of your signals to travel from here to Portugal or Europe, it just gets to Lagos, Lagos here. And it bonus comes back points to you. if you already live in Lagos, bonus point, exactly. So you might not notice it in your WhatsApp chat. WhatsApp will not probably going to get faster, but you will notice it in your YouTube, your Netflix, those things that require more data. Then for those hardcore gamers, playing FIFA, playing GT or whatever, GT Online, mm. they are going to be noticing significant difference with this kind of infrastructure. But there's another layer to it, which is cloud infrastructure. So when you hear cloud, it's not something in the sky, but it's another person's computer. But the computer is like, a very, 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 very high-end infrastructure computer so that you are storing large amounts of data in that computer. So think of an e-commerce website that needs to handle a lot of transactions, millions of people placing orders at the same time. So in essence, your Instagram business could need the cloud in the future as you are growing, unless you just want to be doing it as a side also before you jack bar or something. <laughs> but in essence, your Instagram business... Yeah could become something that would need the advantages of the cloud. You have a website and you're not having a lot of transactions. You're getting lots of orders. You need to keep track of different, different things. So many, many things. Now, the question I've been asking myself is, why has Google been doing all these things in the past only to start launching this? So it just clicked that, okay, they've been watering the ground. You know the way farmers do it now. You clear 
burn the grass, allow it to do whatever you want to do then before you start planting. So they are just sowing this seed of data centers and the subsea cables now because they're investing in startups. Mm-hmm. Who are the people who will come and use the cloud? Of course, it's the startups that will use it. Good. They are giving media houses funds to build innovative products. Bring more people to the internet. And those media houses will use where to build the, it cloud. the cloud. They're giving they are doing career trainings and interviews. Uh, they will still use the internet, isn't it? They will still use Google products, they will still use Google services. They are giving about forty million dollars in cash and kind to non profits. Mm. On the continent as well. On the continent. What would they use to do all those things? It's still the same cloud services. So as I give you that equity free grant that for the Google Blast Founders Fund, for instance, they're collecting, they're not collecting equity, but they're giving you $200,000 worth of Google Cloud credits. So everything kind of makes sense. When they want, if they have tried to introduce the cloud a few years ago, before these startups were uh, thriving and buoyant, there will be nobody to use it. Nobody to use it. So they've watered the ground already and they're just here to make money. Right, but my question is, why are these people not billing in local currencies? Because you see, this our dollar very soon. You will hear that somebody's father is saying that data centers are the ones that are causing our dollar crisis. Of course. <laughs> okay, of course. so don't quote me. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's pretty much the story, and it's not it's not really. Uh, what What do you think about? Any of all the stories I just... Yeah, I yard. mean, a, a data center or a cloud um, region in Africa is good news. Mm. At least um, a business that uses it, they can experience faster transactions. Users, regular users like us can also experience um, faster transactions mm. or faster um, connections. And I'm also looking at the impact it has, apart from like maybe business impact, um, the impact it has more visibility for Google. A lot of mo- a lot of people. I don't. I mean, for a lot of people in Africa, Google is the internet. Yeah, and that could also help. We've been talking about mobile penetration and internet penetration. Mm-hmm. It's still at very low levels in many African countries. So, I mean, the more Google does all of this, it could actually help to pull a lot of people to um, the to bring people on to the internet. And if more people come on the internet, that's a boon for businesses that thrive on the, on internet. the internet. So I think it's net positive for everybody. The more Google does that, yes, they are a business. They want to make money. But there's also the um, knock-on effects of what they are doing. So, And, well, the jury is still out on how much of an... Of like how much money they will actually make from Africa, especially in a very short period of time, let's say five years. Mm-hmm. But I think 10 years, 15, 20 years, with all their investments, um, any other person coming in, any other big tech company coming in, we probably have a lot of work to do to unseat them. So I think they may not make the money now, but they'll definitely make the money at some point. Yeah, very. I, I just imagining, I'm imagining maybe a startup like, say, Great Power. Okay. As part of buying up later. Let's say credit power becomes a unicorn tomorrow. Mm. That's a unicorn that runs on Google's infrastructure because they are one, one of the benef- uh, benefactors of um, a black founders fund. A black founders fund. So that's just one point. But I'm thinking, does it affect right healing anyway? Right healing. Yes. Possibly. Possibly. Right healing. I mean, I mean, Uber is increasing cab fares up and down. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but could it affect right healing? Hmm. I mean, uh, imagine a situation where either Uber decides to come over to, like, b- probably bring some of the engineers to um, Africa. Hmm. I mean, that could affect it. We don't want they should they should just reduce their. What's even going on with that? Self? Well, Uber is increasing their they are increasing their fare in Lagos. I mean, that's that's the notice. Lagos. Uh, we don't know what it's going to be like in other cities. Maybe, but done. And the rest, and we also don't know if they are going to be doing that. Like, if it's something that will happen soon in other African countries, but for now, we know that 
um they are increasing their fare it went into effect on the 3rd of um, october 2022 that's on monday and they are increasing the base fare increasing the minimum fare and then the per minute fare so the base fare has gone from 340 to 450 and um the per minute fare has also gone from 14 naira to 16 naira so it's i mean yes it's bad news Although, yeah, more bad news. So, so the way I think about all of these things, I, I'm not very, very meticulous about like these tiny details like finances. But yeah, if you add, if it's when it adds up, mm. it's it could get significant. But then, it's not like Africa is the first place that they are doing this. Last year, they had to increase fares in London, and um, the reason the country you go mention <laughs> London and Nigeria. Which well, I mean, if they could do that in. If they could increase fares in a place that is, um, where well, say it has a higher bu- buying power or more buying power, then I mean, think about it. They could they did that for a reason. So, if you've used Uber so recently, mm. you'll notice that for us in Lagos, it's difficult or depending on where you are, it takes a longer time for you to get a ride a driver compared to boats. Yes, yes, that's why I didn't use Uber this week okay. because it kept rotating, rotating, rotating. And I couldn't, I couldn't get any driver. That was my experience last week. Like, um, I, I think I was on the island and I was supposed to come back. It took me possibly twenty to thirty minutes before I could get the ride. And even so, it's very, very that's that's one problem. And I was thinking, I was talking about this with Donome during the week, and I don't think it's because the drivers are difficult to find. It's because there's a driver shortage, right? Boat has, and you know, one of the reasons boat has a lot of um, drivers. First, they had the, um, what do you call it, first move advantage, and not really first move advantage, but like when they joined, their practices were kind of less, their sign up practices were less stringent yeah, yeah. than Uber. So a lot of people went there. And even up to this point, I mean, um, I think I was in an Uber ride, and Uber was telling me, you guys have been in one spot for too long. Why? Mm-hmm. And I even saw that they also sent a notification to my driver. So it's 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 one of the reasons why boat has more uh, more drivers, and um, data also shows us that boat has more drivers. So naturally, to be harder, and Uber is doing their best to attract more people yeah. or more drivers. Yeah. So I, I've noticed I've had better experiences with Uber drivers than boat than drivers. Boat drivers. Uber is a lot more strict. Mm. They think twice before drivers think twice before cancelling on you. Yeah, if they can't go to a particular location, so sometimes they even call and plead mm-hmm. that oh, please just help me cancel this because of so so and so reasons. But with both, they not send you like that. Driver <laughs> told me he was coming. He was on. It. I went late for an event because of that. Told me he was on his way, mm-hmm. and I just left it. And before you know it, I saw that yeah, the right. waiting time has increased from five minutes mm-hmm. to twelve minutes. Yeah, I'm like. What, what happened? What happened? He said, oh, don't worry, I'm on my way. Are you not in Susan? I say yes. Before you know, 20 minutes, I say, oh, God, it's God that will forgive you. <laughs> so he was basically going the opposite direction. So he just speaks the... He just speaks the right to so that. He, and he doesn't want to cancel probably because he has counseled a lot of uh, rights. So it's just, it's just very, very weird. But let's keep a pin on that and keep, and we'll try to keep following on what is going on in the right healing space and... Let's see. But what I really wanted to talk about, which we probably not have enough time to digest now, is FG Strain Meta. Yeah. They are suing Meta for 30 billion naira. That's 30 billion gang. 30 billion gang. <laughs> it's it's so, so weird to imagine something like this. So, what are they suing Meta for? They said Meta should be presenting the ads that Nigerians are making to them for them to vet before it goes live. Interesting. So basically, they want to be approving ads before it goes live. Exactly. Why? How does that even make any sense? I have a lot of conspiracy theories. I also do. Good, but I don't know if it's prudent to mention it on Tech Point Africa podcast. (laughs) Let's keep it to ourselves. Yes. Talk about it. But... It's very, very weird because the law that tri- they just amended the app. So the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria, ACON, was formerly the Advertising Protection Council, APCON. And they just updated their act this month. 
<laughs> and they're already suing them. So it is the content of that update they are now using to sue Meta for 30 billion. How it makes sense in any universe, it's it's beyond me. So for me, it feels like the Nigerian government keeps trying, trying. They failed with the social media bill. Mm-hmm. They failed with the NIDA code of practice, the NIDA whatever, whatever. The NIDA bill, yes. The NIDA code of practice was even different from the NIDA bill. The NBC broadcast code. You can find all those stories on Tech Points, right? All these stories, we actually treated them. Then the fifth one, which is this one now. Why do you want to regulate the ads Nigerians are putting online in this period? The atmosphere is politically charged. Yeah. And you want to start regulating ads on social media. How please make it make sense for a law that we cannot find online on their website, on the NAS website. The proposed amendment to the uh to the bill that is making them sue uh, meta okay. right now. The proposed amendment that is available on the National Assembly website as we speak does not contain any of any of these things. So where are they getting with the new update they just did this month? <laughs> <laughs> this this feels so mysterious. And I'm just wondering, is there precedent? Is there any country where they've tried to because what they are what what they are doing, even though it's not what they are saying, is basically wanting to approve ads before they go live. Because if I have to see the ads, that means I can now tell you this ad should not go live. This ad should go live. And I'm just looking at all the ramifications, not just for um, Nigerians, but also for Facebook. First of all, your ads will take longer to be reviewed because trust me, um, Arcon is not going to use some tech to do that. Do they even have the resources to... to do, well, vet the thousands of ads Nigerians put online. Thousands now, millions. I mean, think about everybody who is selling on um, on IG or Facebook these days who are running ads, and apparently a lot of people are running ads. So this is not. I I am almost certain they will use a manual method. They will ask Facebook to probably send share Google Drive. <laughs> yeah, they will do all of that. So I don't know. F- businesses will suffer, but why would Facebook even accept to do that? I do not understand, and I think, yeah, let's talk about this. Let's. T- we need to double down on this because this is. I mean, this think is of how you could affect businesses. So, if you advertise on Facebook or Instagram, for example, and your government is saying um, Meta has to show us the ads to run, Meta can just say, "How much are these guys? <laughs> how much are they costing us?" And then maybe you now realize I just. You're not even making up to $100 million for their ad revenue and you should get out. And all of a sudden, we lose an important source. But there's also someone who could gain. Although the person who could gain may end up being a victim at some point. Man, see. Yes, any, any, anyone who gains becomes You'll a, be victim. a victim. Because I'll say, I was going to say Google could benefit. Maybe more, more Nigerians run... Because you don't see a lot of Nigerian businesses running ads on Google. So, I don't feel, maybe Google... Right, Google is so far. We, we just talked about Google's oh, oh, plenty, plenty activities, right? Mm-hmm. I think Google might be has been a lot smarter about how they go about their. When you hear about all these social media regulations, you really hear Google come up in the equation because what do you, you want go- to do to Google? Google is a search engine. Yes. So, what do you want to do? Um, are you going to penalize them for what people are searching for, or are you going to penalize them for? Something that someone wrote on his blog. I mean, how do you want to start doing that? So yes, maybe maybe uh, Google has to start vetting blogs, okay, Google news before the so before any of my articles come Let's out. Let's not give these guys any ideas. <laughs> I mean, it's not like they do any original thing. They just pick on funny idea and then. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know you guys watch this podcast. That's why we're <laughs> being careful. But we don't. We are not. We're not going to hide our no displeasure. Makes sense. We're not going At to have our displeasure. It doesn't make any sense for you to be. And this is why it's stuff like this that made me pay closer attention to the recent event on the global stage, the International Telecommunications Union. Mm-hmm. So, long story short, the ITU is the global regulator of technology. Things like 5G, radio spectrum. When you hear things like 99.1 frequencies and all of that, 
They are the ones that allocate spectrum. When you see things like plus two, three, four, plus four, plus four, four, when you are making calls, international calls, is this body that actually allocated these codes to different countries? Mm. The ITU allocated these codes in 1964. Nigeria joined the ITU in 1961. It started as far back as 18 in the 1800s, and they started as a telegraph regulating company and. <laughs> In 1885, the first laws that were used to guard telephones, that was where they held a conference in Berlin by 1885. History nerds should pay attention to that too because that's where they shared Africa like pizza. <laughs> I won't lie. So, I don't think it's a coincidence that, oh, a new form of technology just came up at that time. Then at that time, the Europeans also got that. They said, let's just use the opponent to do everything together. And today... It's not an agency of the UN and it regulates technology. It regulates uh, satellite activity. So if your country wants to launch a satellite, you have to take permission or get a license or something from the ITU. So Nigeria has got the, the organization structure. There's a secretary general and there's a 48 member council. Out of that 48 member council, the Africa has 13 slots okay. and Nigeria got re-elected mm. just a few days back. And what made me pay attention to this is, okay, the ITU, most people have been ignoring them. Most people don't even know about them or even care about them. But now that technology companies are becoming more powerful, Google, yeah. Facebook, Amazon, all these guys, the activities are now influencing a lot of things in the political space. Now think about it. Many, many things could change in the internet space with the activities of the ITU. Because Google, Facebook, and all those guys, they're also getting involved. China, Russia, they're all involved in the ITU. You see people lobbying for their own country codes for calls. Countries, regions that are trying to break out of another country. Mm-hmm. They, okay. Maybe they've been trying to lobby the UN directly. It's not working. So they will go through that route. If they can get my country code first. So if you want to call a certain country now, if you want to call my region, you have to die that country code. That's a good start to finally enter the UN. So, a lot of attention is being paid to the ITU now. And I think the US have largely ignored them. But this time around, they started paying attention. Why? China and Russia, they are trying to propose a new protocol to change how we operate the internet. So, okay. individuals will need to register to use the internet. And the governments will now have total control instead of the corporations. So, instead of Google, Facebook, determining what you see on the internet... The Nigerian government, mm-hmm. the South African government, the Kenyan government, the Kenyan government, the Ethiopian government, Ethiopian government, they determine what you see on the internet. Which you is can't not good news for anybody. Exactly. For instance, in China right now, it's a model that worked well for China. You, you can't use Google or Facebook right now in China. They have a super app for that. Anything you want to do, you can do it. You can show up, you can chat on one app. But under the watchful eye of Big Brother. So, think about it. This is the government that has been doing all of this. And then they now have to determine what you see, when you see it, how you see it. Good. Game over. Good. And China has been proposing it in the ITU. And guess what relationship China has with Africa? Trade. Economic relationship. Plenty, plenty, plenty. They forgave our debts recently. Thank you so much, China. And they're going to come back for that. Very, very soon. <laughs> you guys will uh, pay. There's no free I, I lunch. I love in my local language. Mm-hmm. Okay, so think about it. 13 African countries. And in that list of African countries, you can find countries that have censored the internet in the past. But how many of those countries are indebted to China? I'm not. I, I need to actually find out that. Yes, that's and a good actually had their debts forgiven. Hmm. So. We need to okay. look. There's a US sec gem. Maybe the lady can actually push, but the, well, the the idea is if you believe in a free and open internet, mm. we should start paying attention to what's going on in that space because it always seems Nigeria finds one corner or the other to try and regulate what people see on the internet. Um, I, I, I can't ignore it anymore. All the way from social media bill to code of practice to broadcast code. Yes, let's even find out how many people were in the to China. At least I'm sure that Nigeria did not have their debts forgiven. But the other 12, you need to find out. <laughs> if 
as little as five, for example, had their debts forgiven by China. That keeps them forever in their debts. Hmm. So that did you? Nice for yourself. So, oh, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's been really, really interesting, and uh, it's, it's not a full house. The literary team is very, very, very depleted. They are all in the field. They are doing secretary journalism. <laughs> They're in the field out there, and uh, maybe say hi to Nifemi if you have a contact. I'm not giving you. You can DM on Twitter and say hi. I wish uh, hi. So. That's that's pretty much all this. Do we do, did we miss anything? I don't think we did. Um oh, Elon Musk will finally buy Twitter. Okay, I'm not He has no that. choice. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that with you. But yeah, let's let us know what you think about all the episodes we discussed today, especially with FG Swin Meta. Is there a blind spot we are not seeing? I want to see it. And this is me being very, as open-minded as I can possibly be when I see any attempt at censoring the internet the question that comes to my mind is who should control the internet it is definitely not these corporations because i don't trust them mm. but should definitely not be african government like we 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 definitely times five times ten it shouldn't be african governments but let us know what you think that's another conversation we should probably have a an episode on who should in, control the internet who should control the internet All we can do is speculate. Which yeah. expert in the world can I even offer that solution? Well, it's going to just be speculations, but it will still be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it will be interesting. So, yes, idea. Let us know who you would like to hear talk about this, and we're going to grab them by the neck. Yeah, we've reached out to Zipline already, and yeah, we are promising conversations on that front. But let us know who you would like to hear. Uh, like, share, and subscribe on this podcast wherever you find this uh, whether it's Instagram whether it's YouTube whether it's TikTok and of course our OG guys on Google Podcast Apple Podcast Spotify Stitcher iHeartRadio anywhere else you get your podcasts see you guys another time bye, bye.